There are about 57,000 people in the United States waiting for kidney transplants. 4,000 people are waiting heart transplants. There are about the same number waiting for liver transplants as well. And it's a huge population in the millions that have kidney disease. The only unfortunate thing about it is that we don't have enough kidneys to transplant. Six, seven to eight million people have kidney disease and over time would be progressing towards end-stage kidney failure. Um, I'm going to try um, another couple numbers for you. Um, I will talk to you soon. Bye. She absolutely is a hero. She absolutely is. Well, I'm, I'm no hero. I'm no heroine. Um, I would have preferred to stay intact. It was just awful. I mean, I couldn't make myself go fast. Mm -hmm. My legs were, felt like they weighed 400 pounds a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Diane's kidney is a very small kidney, but a very effective kidney. We're very proud of her and of her kidney. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're proud of John too, because he's back to, to baseline, back on track, and actually better than he was before. There's a desperate need. Uh, a lot of these patients do okay on dialysis, but it's, it's, it's more of an existence rather than a life. And organ donation does offer that chance in a healthy life. Uh, we hope that everybody can get a kidney transplant. We hope that there are enough donors around to provide the patients with kidney transplantation. Um, a lot of times, unfortunately, patients uh, die on dialysis. Actually, most of the patients die on dialysis, and very few of them will be able, will be fortunate enough to uh, receive a kidney transplant. I did pretty well, you know, my first three years were really spectacular. I was, I was the first running back in the NFL to get a thousand yards in each of his first three seasons now. Well, I knew him the way uh, Green Bay Packer fans knew him. He was the only hope <laughs> on the team. And uh, I was always impressed with his, uh, not just his abilities, but his sort of modest, approach to it and he and I were introduced uh, down in Little Italy where we both went to a little deli coffee shop and they knew I was a Packer fan and so they said you're not going to believe who comes in here regularly and so we met. Let himself go I mean, for longer than anybody question. else would have yeah, allowed himself to go. If he didn't come in or, or if he was in a place where there was no medical care, he would have pretty much died in uh, I wasn't three, four days. Cells, so I was and Diane was, was a blessing, uh, so, I mean, uh, not I only to John, but to all the medical steps professionals and that, that followed steps John throughout this period of time. She just, was uh, you know, very, uh, very, very uh, insistent in trying to help him. He, she actually let himself go from the very beginning for longer than anybody else would have allowed himself to go. If he didn't come in, or if he was in a place where there was no medical care, he would have pretty much died in three, four days. And Diane was, was a blessing, uh, not only to John, but to all the medical professionals and that, that followed John throughout this period of time. She, was uh, very, very insistent in trying to help him. He she actually wanted to do it from the very beginning. So there's very would be lying if I didn't say I had a moment of fear about you're in the hospital for two days. Fortunately, I was just about to go on the anesthesia and there was no turning back. But the truth is, the second kidney in a human is almost the kidney is a very sturdy little thing. It's a plug and play. It comes out, it goes in. It's it is the oldest transplant. Sturdy from the 19th organ, and they zip it, it out and plug it in, and it starts working the minute the end stuff is surrounds the, 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 surround so the plumbing. Very and it does the job. Scarring is different. The other side is about you're in the hospital yeah, for two days. Like you are, really uh, can drive yeah, after two to three weeks and resume normal activity. The second kid so in human is almost unnecessary. It's almost a replicated organ. 
Um, no risk it's it's not it's not a real simple, sturdy organ, and they zip it out and plug it in, and it starts working the minute they unclamp this surrounding plumbing, and it does the job. There really are no side effects. Yeah, I never have a moment at work where I, like, I'm really dizzy or I'm really fatigued. I never have that. You know, so I'm just normal. As long as I take my pills, I'm good. And so everything is, is great. You know, so I can go to work every day. You know, I can work out. I can do any of that kind of thing. I have, I have no restrictions. I can do all that recreational stuff like jog and skate and all that business, swim, throw a book. Well, that's no problem because it's in there now. And it's been there for two years, so it's just like part of your body. The quality of life of a kidney transplant patient is greatly improved over dialysis. In addition to the time on dialysis, the time, the hours spent on dialysis, it also takes away your energy levels. Patients on dialysis have um, kind of a roller coaster energy level. They feel pretty good, but then they go to dialysis and their energy gets taken from them. Then they feel start to feel better and they go back to dialysis because dialysis is every other day. Kidney transplantations have a much steadier state of energy and a much steadier state of health. So therefore they feel better, um, they're able to have more active and healthy lives. Yeah. We have had a lot of wives donating to husbands actually. We have husbands donating to wives. The one word I would use to describe Diane is resilient. There were a lot of, um, a lot of obstacles for her to overcome to become a donor. And she was adamant about donating. She was adamant about making it right. She was willing to do anything with respect to herself to make herself healthy enough to donate. She absolutely is a hero. She absolutely is. She is um, so supportive of John. And I don't think when she went into this that she had any idea of how she was gonna impact his life. I think she knew that this would help him and this would make him feel better, but it was such a selfless act and she just wanted to make him better fast. Um, I just, I don't think she had any idea. She didn't care about what it was gonna do to her and I don't think she had any idea of how positively it was gonna affect John's life. And I loved him before and I loved him during and I love him now. And um, I'm very grateful that, that really Providence has put us uh, in a position where being married is the best thing. The largest growth they've seen in organ donation is among living donors. Isn't that remarkable? More and more and more every day people are saying, oh, well, let, me, let me help. How, how can I help? Let me fix that. I think that's incredibly poignant and it speaks so strongly to the human spirit being alone. If it's in our own backyard, if it's in our own families, well, you know, we're in the human family. And especially if it's after you're gone, wouldn't you have that feeling that you could save somebody else that you don't know? If you're touched by this, you can call us and we can refer you to places. You can call Life Sharing in San Diego. You can call uh, the Kidney Foundation. You can go online to unos.org, which is runs a running list of how many Americans are waiting for the phone to ring. And it's updated hourly. You can see exactly who donates to whom what organs, how successful they are. Everybody in the medical community is up to speed on this. They're just waiting for you to step up and to say, yes, I'll be a donor. Life goes on and on That's what my mama said